Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. We're going to get into a lead today in depth and we're going to talk about some of the misinformation out there and what you need to be looking at. There's so much data out there that I think sometimes we drown in data and we get a lot of people that overemphasize one single piece of data and ignore 99% of the data. So we'll talk about all this. I'm going to be upfront honest. I'm going to tell you what we know, but more importantly, what we don't know. And I'll show you as much data as possible and not withhold 99% uh, of the data to show you one thing that scares the living, you know what, out of you. So let's get right to the latest on what is Tropical Storm Lee. But looking at this satellite image right now, you can see it is getting very close to being a hurricane. It's got that classic look. This is outflow channels to the north, getting a pretty good one to the south, and the low-level circulation is there. There's still some dry air wrapping in here as well, but it's got that symbol, the hurricane symbol shape, right? And it's taking on that configuration right now let's show you the spaghetti plots right off the bat everybody looks at these quite often these are the latest run from this morning you notice one thing in common pretty tight clustering but at the end there is some spread and this is key there is some uncertainty here where is it going to go but the whole thing about you know people showing you data where it's plowing into the carolinas or somewhere else that stuff's bogus at this point we just don't know that type of specific information that far out and by the way if you did see one piece of information like that they ignored all the 99 percent of the other data that shows the complete opposite things to keep an eye on so let's look at the ensembles one of the things i'm a big proponent of if you're not familiar with is called ensemble forecasting that's not tanking one single model run uh, one piece of data it's looking at all of the different variations think of ensembles like simulations if you're a, a football player uh, you know, Madden football player, I know a lot of folks love Madden. Um, you can run simulations, right, for the upcoming season. Um, you can run hundreds of simulations. If you get one that has some weird team winning the Super Bowl, that's not realistic, right? That's called an outlier. So when you run all of these simulations, you look for what's the most likely probability. So in this case, love that Tomer Berg runs this site with the super ensemble, takes all of the guidance and all the ensemble members and puts them together. So the first thing you notice is, this is pretty stunning, pretty well, you know, good consensus here for the next three or four days. There's not a lot of uncertainty there. There's big uncertainty here, but it's really into two directions. And I would say the majority and look at the, the yellows and greens here. Look over here. That's like that's getting close to 50 percent probability of this turn this direction. But this is a big but and why you need to stay diligent and pay attention there's about a 20 to 25% chance of this taking a little left turn there. So the fact that there's a little split in the ensemble guidance is pretty important. But for folks in the Carolinas and people watching me here uh, on the East Coast, notice what you don't see. <laughs> not a single member. There's a couple stray ones out here, but not a single one heading towards the coast right now. Now, does that mean you need to not pay attention or not you know, uh, stay up to date on the forecast? Absolutely not. What it means is there's no need to worry right now. We're in the watch phase, pay attention phase. We're not in the freak out phase, unless you're somebody on TikTok who just loves freaking people out for no reason and you have no idea what you're doing, which seems to be the trend, honestly. And to reinforce this, let's look at the trend of guidance over time. I'm going to move my head out of the way. This is all of the ensemble members put together here um, over the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven runs. Notice how consistent the tracks are. There isn't a lot of variation. At the end, they all show a recurvature. The only changes have been how quickly that churn happens. And to me, that's the question we should be asking and answering. When is that churn going to happen? And what do we mean by that churn? Well, let's go to this piece of information. This is a, a broader look at the 500 millibar heights and temperatures in the Atlantic. So first things first, everything that's driving this storm pins around this high pressure system over the middle of the Atlantic. This high pressure system, which is basically right here, is a big ridge of high pressure. It is steering the storm. It's very strong right now. And it's moving to the north of the system and continues pushing it off to the west. That ridge, how strong or weak it is, is going to be crucial to when the churn or no churn happens. Right now, it looks like it stays pretty strong all the way to about Bermuda and starts to steer it to the north. Now, 
what's interesting here, I got to move my, my cursor again. What's interesting here is at the same time all this is happening, I'm going to pause this about 108 hours out, we've got a trough or a dip in the jet stream coming down over the Great Lakes right here. If this dips down far enough and is strong enough, in fact, you can see it kind of dipping down in the Carolinas right there, it will start to influence or pull this north. One thing I can tell you about large, powerful hurricanes that you got to be careful of, the outflow. We showed you earlier. See these outflow channels? That's air coming out of the storm in the upper levels. It's going out, and what it's doing, it's helping to build ridges around it. And sometimes that outflow can help enhance or make this ridge stronger to the north. Um, one thing we will find out in the coming days, we have no upper air data out there except for aircraft flying between the Caribbean and Europe and the United States and Europe, and maybe you know a couple buoys out there and some satellite data. Over the continental United States and over land, we've got weather balloons and tons of commercial air traffic. So what's going to happen is that the, the hurricane hunters are going to fly out there. Not only are they going to fly into the storm, but they're probably going to do an upper air mission, which is a zigzag pattern out here over the western Atlantic, dropping drop sounds from 30, 30 35,000 feet. That will help sample the synoptic airflow and let us know how strong or weak that ridge is going to be. So that's something we don't know yet, but we're likely going to know in the coming days, which is really, really important. So let's go back to the trends. The trends are our friend. That's something I say often. You don't look at one piece of data. You look at all of the data over several model runs. The models, most of them, the consistency of most of the models are run four times a day. So if someone's posting something on one single model run from one model in that one run and not looking at all the models over two or three runs, they're doing it wrong. That's just not the way you kind of do it. Um, the one thing that has everybody concerned, and this is probably the one thing that I will agree with with a lot of people and why we need to pay particular attention and why you just can't get the opposite and say, oh, this is a fish storm, nothing to worry about. This is going to be a powerful hurricane. All of the consistent guidance is showing us a Category 4 or 5 storm. New guide, intensity guidance this year, which did amazing with rapid intensification with the Delia, the HAFSA and HAFSB are all showing Category 5 strength. Reinforcing the fact that the consensus is our friend, trend is our friend, this is the consensus track. If you want to look for where the Hurricane Center is going to put a track, look at what's called the TVCN. That is the consensus model track. This is the last one, two, three, four, five, six consensus model track runs. The X is where the storm has actually been. If anything, you notice in these runs, um, the models have been shifting a little bit further north and just a little bit further west. But some of that western um, shift isn't the model shifting, it's just we're going further into time. Remember, some of this guidance only goes out five, seven, 10 days. So the next day, now it goes out a day later. So that shift isn't really a shift, it's just we're advancing the forecast another day into the future. So for instance, these models all might have endpoints up here the next day because Everything's progressing one day into the future. So you can't get too caught up in, in some of this stuff. So that's the consensus track. So I'm doing this um, this vlog right now, right before the next advisor comes out at 11 a.m. Eastern time. I can tell you there's not going to be a lot of change. Why? What you're looking at here, here's our storm right here. The white dots are the official Hurricane Center forecast for the next five days. The red dots are is that consensus track. So it's the consensus model. And notice how they are almost right on each other. And if we go out further in the future, the consensus track shows a category four recurving and becoming a category three by Wednesday at 8 a.m. Okay, so the next the next hurricane center forecast, guess what's going to happen? I can, I can tell you right now, it's going to go like this or somewhere close to that, somewhere in here. Okay, but the key part here is the consensus moving this way. So going forward, the thing you have to watch out for is how much of a how much does this shift west or does it take longer for that turn to happen? And in that vein, this is a graphic I put out yesterday that kind of shows the current thinking. I'm going to move my head out of the way here. So this is the current thinking of what's happening. We've got the Bermuda High powering this thing, this trough digs down. If everything goes according to plan, or currently what we're looking at, this yellow line should be the track of the storm. It should take this track and push between the United States and Bermuda, which by the way is not a fish storm. That is splitting the uprights and too dang close. Now, 
there is a small chance, and this would be like perfect for the United States, horrible for Bermuda. The Bermuda high weakens quite a bit, maybe backs up, and the trough digs down deeper than expected. And this heads right for Bermuda, or maybe even east of Bermuda, which looks less and less likely, honestly. I don't see that happening. So of all the scenarios, I would say this is probably the least likely. So I do not think this is going to happen now. I think the one I just showed you is. But this is the one that keeps you up at night and also means you got to pay attention. There is still the probability that the ridge continues to build west, becomes stronger than expected, and big, powerful hurricanes are like giant ships. They don't turn on a dime. They're hard to turn. So they could take a little bit longer. So that churn takes much longer. The trough is much weaker. And you get some type of direct or, or maybe even indirect impact on the East Coast. And again, where that happens is virtually impossible to say right now. Um, it could be from Florida. I wouldn't rule out Florida to the Carolinas. But one thing about the Carolinas, the reason the Outer Banks in Eastern North Carolina gets hit so much is because we stick out. The, the land of the Carolinas sticks out like this, okay? And this pattern is very common in, in the fall in the tropics. This is not an uncommon track. This happens all the time. I could show you hundreds and hundreds of storms that do this. So this recurvature, instead of missing the United States, clips the Outer Banks, clips Long Island, clips Cape Cod, and then goes into Canada. That happens a lot. So that's why you got to worry about that. And again, th this could be just offshore, onshore. Again, you can't rule anything out at this point and it bears watching so last but not least i'll go back to my ensemble idea let's look at all the information from the major global models i love this product as well this is the ensemble forecast for lee at through last night's runs or really early this morning utc sign you see all of the blue those are all the ensemble runs out to 168 hours you can see we've got all of the data except for three percent of the uk met all of them show some type of recurvature except for this mess over here look at the ensemble confidence high 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 through 72 hours then moderate 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 all the way through 144 hours the uncertainty really happens after that so if you're looking for 144 hours on this chart we got a pretty good handle on where it's probably going to be in this range okay we've got moderate to high confidence here is where it starts to drop to low and I know everybody on the East Coast that doesn't give you much solace because that's where you live. So again, I'll go back to here. This will be the updated track coming out. This is the consensus track. Right now, I expect it to be somewhere far east of the Bahamas, off the Southeast Coast, south of Bermuda, sometime Wednesday morning. And that brings me back to, we've got time, okay? There will be four model runs a day, every day, until this storm makes landfall or goes out to sea. Those are hundreds of model runs and ensemble members that have to come out without any aircraft data until maybe the weekend um, that we have time to watch this. There's a lot of data still yet to come. Don't get too much anxiety, worried over one single piece of data, one model run, one single piece of uh, information. Let it be a holistic approach and we've got time. Things will happen. Trust me, we have plenty of time. This is a six to seven day forecast in this range. That means you're still in the 10 day range likely and it could slow down the the one thing i noticed on the consensus track is a slowdown and actually i do like the fact that it slows down because big hurricanes are going to have to slow down to turn um so this is probably a good sign one thing to keep an eye on is that it does slow down and maybe it stalls or weakens and weakens steering currents out here so we might be dealing with this for a long time so i know this is a long video but i wanted to pour into it be very cautious of the information you're, you're seeing out there. Make sure it's somebody you know. Make sure they're credible. Make sure they post about weather more than just when there's a big event to get shares and likes. Trust me, the point is to keep you safe without freaking you out. There's nothing to freak out about right now. It's the heart of the hurricane season. Everybody on the coast, you should already be paying attention to. And with the Lee out there, it just reinforces the fact that you got to stay weather aware.